Well, hello everyone, welcome to the second Swift tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about the foundation frameworks in Swift, like string, double, int, boolean, array, dictionary, and some Objective C frameworks. So let's get on. Okay, let's create a Hello World app in Swift quickly and have our frameworks tested over there. So I create a new project, single view, I call it Hello World and we select Swift, we want it for iPhone, we don't need checkbox these stuff and we hit next and it will save it on the directory that we want and here are our files so if I open it okay we have a view controller file that's Swift so if you open this file and get rid of this function, we will talk about it later, and also this comment. So you can just have these left on, we need them. We will talk about what is this function and what is it good for, but for now we just use it. So we want to define a variable. Uh, how do we define a variable in Swift? It's very easy, we just say var and then our uh, variable name so we just say language name for example and then we specify the type of uh, the variable we would say string and we simply equal it by whatever we want so the language that we are working is Swift so that's all that's all we have to do for defining a variable but let's see what is it complaining here. So as soon as you see a triangle here, it means that it's warning. So let's see company A. It says initialization were not used. So let's just use this variable and get rid of this warning. Uh, in order to print it in a console, there is a very nice command called print. It's very easy. And we can just pass this variable name into this function and it should uh, not semicolon <laughs> so it should print it on the console so if I run the program I should see Swift on my console <coughs> but while it's running let's just talk about this warning again um, if I open this it's still there so it didn't actually get rid of it but it's basically for another reason and so I'm waiting for this okay so as you can see in console it print out Swift so let's open this one more time and see what is it complaining for it says a uh, variable language name was never mutated consider changing it to let so this is uh, the different and uh, that we have from Objective-C and Swift see here it complains and says through the application you have never changed this variable so it wants you to change from or to let so if you want to define a variable that you don't change it through the scope you have to use let but if you want to change it and uh, you have to use war for example if I want to change this variable uh, again it won't let me do it and it would complain it would say this is let you, sh you, sh you cannot change it and it's a obg obgc and look at the error this time we have error it's not um, a warning and it says change let to war so as soon as I change the let that we had here to war it will stop complaining and if I print the console, it will show me OBJC. So this is a simple um, difference between Objective-C and Swift. So uh, another thing that I have to mention here is uh, Swift is uh, smart enough to recognize the type. So if I remove this part, the string part, it can recognize it is string. So as long as it's inferable, Swift is awesome in this 
an area and it can recognize the type. So if you don't type it, it will recognize it. The next type that we will talk about is int, integer. So I want to define a variable called year and the type is int. And I want to call it by 2016. So if I define it like this, it um, will complain because we never used it. So we can just use it in uh, print for console. And I can remove this int and it will infer it as integer. So I first I put comments, by the way, and here's how you comment for and Swift in basically like other programming languages. It's inferred as int if I remove this int. Next, I want to define another variable called version. Version. And I put it some decimal value and then use it in a print. And if I add double, so it define it as a double. So I can even don't use double, and it will infer as double. So I can say double, and just simply remove it. The next type is boolean. So I would define let is awesome. Of course, it's awesome and define as bool and we say true. It gets either true or false. So if I want to remove this bool, I would just simply remove it and as bool. You don't need to add this comment. I'm just adding it uh, for you to know um, what is the type if you don't add it. So you can just simply don't add any comment here and it will still infer. So that's all for these primitive types. The next important type that we're gonna introduce is an array. So there are two ways to defining an array. So I will start with the first one. I would call var and then I would say letters. I call it letters and I make it equal to array and then I would say okay in this array I would put only strings strings and open and close parentheses this is how we define an array then we can add stuff to our uh, uh, variable and simply we can just add letters as we named it so b and c so right now it just let's see what is complaining um it says never read so let's just use it we can say print this is how we access the uh, object in uh, array we just open and uh, close bracket and we define the number of uh, the item that we want. For example, I want uh, item number 0, 1, 2, so I would say 1. So if I run the program, it should give me B, letter B. And let's see in console if it actually gives us B. Yes, and if you can see, these are the result from the previous print but the last one is B so this is the first way to defining an array the second way is we can just say var and this a number numbers and then open and close bracket in uh, open and close parentheses and inside of it you can define what you want to add in uh, for this array so I want to put uh, integers inside of my array so let's put some integers then numbers equals so you should put integers otherwise it would complain and it gives you error three four so 
Now I can just go ahead and print numbers. Numbers. So see, uh, if I add some string here, it would complain in because I promised that I put integer, but if I look at this, it cannot convert string to expected integer. So it expects you to add only integers in your array. The other things that we ha need to know for arrays is uh, iterate through the array. So I add a simple for loop and I say number in numbers and open the curly brace and print me number. So it will go through the numbers and it adds one by one into number and print it out to the console. So let's run the program and it should return one, two, three, four. So as you can see in console, one, two, three, four is printed out. Uh, the next one uh, is defining a dictionary. We also have two uh, methods for defining a dictionary. So I would say var dict equals this time instead of array you can say dictionary dictionary and inside of uh, this uh, we define uh, the key type and the value type and at the end open and close parentheses and we can just add some value to our dict equals so the key is for example 10 the value oh I love this. the value is 10 basically and I add this new key it's 20 and the value is number 20. So I can again iterate through the keys and values simply by for loop and I would say for and we define key and value close it in dict and after that open and close curly brace and print. So here uh, in a print function we always added some um, constant things like our letters and stuff and we didn't use any variable inside of the print function. If we want to use a variable inside of the print we should do such uh, a string like this. So. I want to have a string like it, it should say for example for the first value it should say value let's put it some comment value for for example this key I put this key uh, is and the number so I want to be dynamic for example for the first one it says value for 10 is 10 and for second one it says value for 20 is 20. So how can I do that? First uh, I have to just copy paste this here since this is constant one. Then as soon as I reach to the um, variable I put backslash and open parentheses close parentheses and put my variable here. So see you can even suggest you the variable. Now uh, the next uh, I, I, I'm having the string until here so is is constant so I can just copy paste it here but again the value is not a constant so I just do the same thing that we did for key we put backslash open and close parentheses and the value so now if I run the program it should give me it should iterate through all of the um, keys and values and return the string that I ex expect. So as I expected its value for 20 is 20 value for 10 is 10. 
and it's not in order that we added it's because it's dictionary and it's unordered so we can simply remove this okay there is another way that we can define a dictionary and it's uh, very similar to the and uh, the way that we define an array here so if I just have a new dictionary and I open and close bracket and open and close parentheses I just have to define a key type column and defining the value type so this is how we define a dictionary in a new way and we can just definitely add it some values and say new dict equals some strings I'm sorry like this and the key is string say letter A and the value for letter A is 1 because you should be integer and the key for the second one is letter B and the key is this time but we can simply change it and say the key is a string the value is also a string as soon as I change it it, it expects to have a string here so I will change it to a and maybe capital A so letter B is B so that's how we define it and it's complaining here because uh, we have not used it we can just simply use the print but I will use it in next tutorial uh, because it doesn't return exactly what we are expecting and I will explain it completely in the next tutorial the next set of foundation frameworks it's totally um, relates to objective C and because of um, historical reasons they this uh, still using NS object, NS number, NS data, and NS, NS state. Uh, we will talk about these types um, through the whole and uh, through the course if we need it. But for now, I don't want to confuse you guys. And uh, just um, these are the primitive and important types in Swift. And uh, we will have uh, another type which is optional, and I will talk about it in the next session.